Wow, rap man. So, amazing job of sending a really powerful message through film. Knife crime, gun crime, violence, like gang wars, that's all something that's happening mm -hmm. in real life today. So I guess that's where you drew your inspiration from? Yeah, because um, that's my background. Mm -hmm. I grew up in that world, so um, I always think a writer should write about what they know first. Yeah. And unfortunately, <laughs> this is what I knew, you know what I'm saying? So it, it was like a story based on my life, so mm -hmm. I wanted that to be the first thing that hits the big screen. That's amazing, yeah. And Dave even once said, man is still beefing over ends. We don't own this land and we don't even like this weather. Oh, which um, is something that goes, Dave. yeah, big up Dave. It goes alongside your film pretty well. If there's someone watching this that isn't a similar predicament to like the main character stuck between gang rivalry, what would your advice be to them? My advice is to watch this movie. <laughs> I could tell you something, but um, I'll put it crystal clear in this film, the consequences of the route that you're going down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there's... It's not no silver rainbows in this film, man. It's really the the truth of it. And um, watch the truth and then see if you if you're happy with it. And if you're happy with it, continue. <laughs> if not, maybe change a new career path, man. Find something different. Honestly, and without spoiling it too much, um, did you have alternate endings, or was it always gonna be like this way? Because no, that was emotional. There was no ending. There was no other ending. Literally, yeah, I remember. I, I remember writing it, getting to the ending, and thinking, hmm. How is this gonna end now? Mm. And it just it just kept on coming back to that. And it was just like I remember when someone watched it from Viacom, which is a company that owns Paramount and many others, and they was like, yeah. We're surprised that everyone they let you keep that ended in. Oh really? Because it was so it's not it's not your typical. And I was like, one thing I never got no backlash was about the ending. Like I had many notes about the script, mm. but the ending was something that everyone was happy with. And unfortunately, that is real life, and that's what you're projecting that's how right it goes, now. Yeah. Your story, um, it did like make me cry. I'm not gonna lie. I feel <laughs> like if you don't, sad. if you don't cry, you've got a strong emotional barrier to, to put up with because it's deep. I've seen the film many times, and mm -hmm. some the other day I was just walking into a screening of it, and I could just hear it from the outside, the screams and the yells, and I was yeah. like flipping out, man. I forgot how deep this is. <laughs> so deep. Yeah. It's, and um, tell me a little bit more about your casting process because I understand you had to fight for some of your actors. Um, Isabella Duffin was our casting director, big mm. hero, she's amazing, she found all of my stars mm. and um, she found everyone and obviously it's my decision to say yeah or nay and I sat in all the auditions with her um, and when we did finally find our cast, we nearly lost Mac, yep. who plays uh, Marco, he just finished Top Boy, well, he, he literally just finished Top Boy, he had one week break and um, right. Netflix didn't want us to use him because he wanted to be, they wanted to use him as their breakout star. Okay, like exclusive. Yeah, yeah. like exclusive <laughs> just for Netflix, just for Top Where, If he comes out in Blue Story, it could look like we discovered him and not right. them. And okay. he, they tried to pull him out, but Mike wrote a letter to them and said, I really want to be a part of it. And then we contacted them. And as long as we agreed to kind of come out afterwards, it mm -hmm. wasn't really a thing. And um, okay. it was a fight for Mike, but... As you see, if you've seen the film, you see how vital he was to the story. Yeah, how yeah, I don't know if anybody else could have done it the way he done it, you know? Yeah, and I mean, you got to fight for what you want in life. Yeah, anyway, and so. I knew Michael was worth the fight, and there were certain points where they were saying, you know what, well, this is getting a bit, maybe we should move on. We yeah. found someone new, but we auditioned so many characters for that, people for that role. Yeah. And no one got it quite like him. Mm -hmm. So there was no other option, really. Yeah, that's amazing. And when you first put out Shira's story on YouTube, like, did you expect all the hype it got? Did you expe expect the reception? Nope. I remember putting part one out thinking, you know what, it'll probably people might like it, it'll get a couple hundred thousand views like what I always get, and move on to the next. So I remember putting it out, hi guys, this is my new video. <laughs> yeah, if it gets a million views, I do part two. Thinking it would never get a million views. Yeah. So I've never write part two, and this is just my latest work, and I'll, I'll probably be back one day with something new. Yeah. But it, days it had a million views. Everyone's still talking about it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It was really picking up a mad buzz, and then it just from part two to part three, and then it just went everywhere. Like everyone loved it. I never expected it. It wasn't even. I could have never have told you that this is gonna be the one. I never yeah. knew. That's amazing. So, are we gonna see more rap man films in cinema? Hundred percent, man. Films, TV shows. This is literally the beginning of my journey. Like, yeah. Everything up to then has been to this moment, and from this moment on is where it begins. Well, I watched the film last night and I really want to watch it again. That's seconds. how impactful it was. <laughs> so, like, congratulations Thank on all you. the success. Big up.